नमस्ते वेलकम टू दिस चैनल केमिस्ट्री मेड इजी बाय डॉक्टर अशोक मोहित टुडे वी विल डिस्कस इस क्वांटम नंबर्स एंड एटॉमिक वेव फंक्शंस इट इज द पॉइंट ऑफ दिस एटॉमिक स्ट्रक्चर सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस दिस क्वांटम नंबर्स एंड एटॉमिक वेव फंक्शंस मैथमेटिकली वी नो दैट द एटॉमिक ऑर्बिटल्स are having discrete solutions of their schrodinger's wave equations for a every electron means the solution of the schrodinger's wave equation is not same for all electrons present in the atom means any given electron will have different solution for the schrodinger's wave equation as a result of this we get the correct address of the electron present in the atom <coughs> here we are having the quantum numbers named such as n l m and n l we say and n s here we say that is the n is principal principal quantum number L is azimuthal, azimuthal, or we can say angular momentum quantum number, quantum number. <coughs> Then M L is magnetic quantum number. ms is spin quantum number spin quantum number now we will have different values of these quantum numbers principal quantum number we have values 1 2 3 4 5 5 etc azimuthal quantum number we will have values <coughs> for each that is for Uh, every n value, or we can say, the l will have the value zero, one, up to n minus one. So l will have values for uh, such as zero, one, two, three, etc., up to n minus one. <coughs> Then m l will have values from minus l through zero. To plus l and spin quantum number we have values either plus one half or minus one half. <coughs> Now we will see that <coughs> these quantum numbers, that is principal quantum number, we will explain about the main, that is the main energy. levels that is atomic orbits this will explain about the orbits and it it will also explain about the <coughs> energy major amount of energy so this will contribute to the <coughs> major amount of energy so this will determine the major part of the energy of the orbitals and orbits So this z, that is uh, l, azimuthal quantum number or angular momentum quantum number, <coughs> will have values like this: zero, one, etc. So this zero, one, this will explain about the exact the available atomic orbital that is for given electron. <coughs> so this will describe the <coughs> dependence of angular momentum. So angular dependence will be explained by this angular momentum quantum number, and it will also contribute to energy. Further, the magnetic quantum number, that is, this quantum number, will explain about the orientation in space. So this will explain about orientation, orientation in space. <coughs> so whether it is oriented in the space in the direction of x axis y axis 
z axis or in between the axis or in any other way so this we explain that the magnetic quantum number will explain about the exact orientation of the atomic orbital in the space around the nucleus and spin quantum number will explain about the orientation orientation of electron in that is magnetic that is magnetic orientation so orientation of electron in the atomic orbital so when it is say when this orbital and this any electron say this electron is say this is the electron if it is revolving in this way in clockwise direction it will have plus one r spin again if the electron is having the spin in opposite direction that is in anti clockwise direction it will have minus one r spin so this magnetic spin quantum number will explain only about the spin state of the electron and every electron is considered here as a small bar magnet so this will behave as a magnet and therefore it will be affected by the magnetic field <coughs> then <coughs> the electrons that is angular momentum of the electron is considered to be <coughs> in the direction that is x y z that is z direction so we are selecting the suitable direction of the propagation of electron it is the z direction now we will see the various orbitals which are represented by these scale quantum number that is angular momentum when we are having say the values l as 0 1 2 3 4 etc then we will have the shifts that is this is uh, that is we say labels label of the atomic orbital so it will be having s orbital this is having p orbital this is Here, zero we describe that it is s orbital. L is equal to one. We we'll describe that these are p orbitals. So two we we'll describe these are d orbitals. Three we we'll describe that these are f orbitals. And four we we'll describe that these are g orbitals. So in this way, we are having the values of this s that is one s, two s, two p, three s, etc. Uh, this p will have also values starting from two, two p, x to p y to p z etc. D will have values starting from three main shape that is n is equal to three, that is three d x to n. So we will see these we have actual numbers, and there are also f orbitals having such seven values. So these are represented in this way. <coughs> so when we consider the atomic orbitals which are uh, considered here for instance that is for hydrogen atom so in case of hydrogen atom the wave functions real wave fun real wave functions for hydrogen atom the real wave functions the real wave functions in cartesian coordinates in cartesian coordinates is here co coordinates are given here so we will show these things in tabular form so first of all we will show the problem that is quantum quantum numbers that is l there is a quantum number quantum number
number is an L. <coughs> then we will see the Cartesian coordinates. Cartesian coordinates. <coughs> that is uh, <coughs> in theta and phi, theta and phi. It is in terms of x, y, and z. <coughs> then we will have the shape of the orbit and level of the orbit. So we will have these columns. Level of atomic orbital. And shape of atomic orbital. <coughs> so we will see one by one. When we see L, the value of L is 0, the quantum number value for ML is also 0. Then the Cartesian coordinates are like this 1 of 1, 2 into root pi root pi 1 upon 2 into root pi or you can write in this way also 1 upon 2 root pi so here <coughs> the shape of this atomic orbital so if we say these are the x y and z axis the shape of this orbital will be like this, that is spherical. So, this we have complete spherical in nature. <clears throat> that is three dimensional structure we have to consider here, and it is labeled as S orbital. Then we have another orbital <clears throat> that is when L is equal to. 1 and we have L is equal to 1 we are having the L value ML value 0 then plus 1 and minus 1 then we will have the Cartesian coordinates here 1 half into 1 half into square root of 3 z upon pi r 3 z upon pi r <coughs> so here this will have the atomic orbital that is called d z d z uh, p z not d z it is p z orbital it is p z orbital and it will have shape like this. So this is x, this is y, and this is z. Then we will see that the shape of the orbital is like this. So that is pz orbital. <coughs> Similarly, when we have the atomic orbital named by this ml value that is plus 1 then it will have this 1 half into square root of 1 half into square root of, of 3 x upon pi r 3 x upon pi r then we will have the different shape of the atomic orbit that is x, y and z so the atomic orbitals are oriented in the x direction. Like this. And this is called P. Sorry. This is called P x orbital. And when we are having this minus 1 value for ML, then it is 
one half into square root of three y upon pi r. Then the atomic orbital sum will be this way: x, y, and theta. These are the coordinates, and this orbital is oriented in this. Like this, and it is called p y orbital. So this is called p y orbital. <coughs> so we have seen that when l is equal to one, it will have three values. That is zero plus one minus one. So this l will represent p orbitals, and zero will represent this p z. Plus one will represent p x. And this one, minus one will represent p y orbit. So in this way, we have to remember the types of orbitals. <coughs> Now we will see the next type of orbitals, which are represented by various l values. Now we will take this two value, and l is equal to two. We are having l. We have seen zero and one value. Now we will see. And is equal to two. Then this L will have thus zero value first. Then plus one, minus one, plus two, and minus two. So this will have five different values. So <coughs> the orbitals represented by this two value are d or for d orbitals. Now when we are uh, representing or considering this. Another value that is zero, it will represent the Cartesian coordinates, like that is one fourth, one fourth into square root of five upon pi into two into two z square minus. Square minus y square upon r square. <coughs> so this is represented with the shape x axis, y axis, and z axis. So the orbital represented here is like this. So these are two loops, which are lying in the direction of z axis. So you will see these are lying. We will record this. Z axis, x axis, y axis. So two loops are lying in the direction of. Z axis like this. And two loops are lying in the reduced form of like this. So this is called DZ two orbital. This is called DZ two orbital. So it has total four lobes, out of which two lobes are lying in the direction of Z axis, and two lobes are reduced and present in the horizontal plane in the circular ring form. Then we will have. This way we have seen this zero. Then we will see when n l is plus one, then it is represented by one half, one half into square root of fifteen upon pi, fifteen upon pi into. 
so first of all we will see only some part of this that is xz or zx zx upon r square zx upon r square so this will represent the structure like this these are the coordinates x y and z now we will have this dzx orbit this is called the zx orbit so it has lobes it has also four lobes with of the atomic orbit and out of these four lobes is these are like every lobe is like between x x and zx so this is x axis this is z axis so we will show this one lobe here another lobe is shown here between z and x axis like this another lobe is shown here in this way z and x axis and here also in the form of z and x axis <coughs> so this is about d z x now we will see when it is plus minus 1 minus 1 then we will have also the values like one half one half of square root of 15 upon pi square root of 15 upon pi 15 upon pi into d uh, that is uh, y j y j upon r square y j upon r square so this is represented by that is x axis z axis and this is y axis so these, these lobes are present between y and z axis so these are also four lobes so they are lying between z and y axis so this is between z and y axis so there is also this z axis and y axis so we have to show like this <coughs> so these are four loops out of which two are lying in the direction of y axis and two are lying in the direction uh, in between y and z axis <coughs> again now we will see the third that is uh, fourth we see with having plus two value so this has having the value that is one fourth one fourth into square root of one fourth into square root of fifteen upon pi fifteen upon pi into d that is x2 minus y2 upon r square so these are lying between so if we say this is x axis z axis and y axis then you can show these are lying in this way two lobes out of four lobes two are lying in the direction of x axis like this <coughs> And two loops are lying in the direction of y axis. So we can have the loops like this. Like this. <coughs> and this is called D x2 minus y2 or by 2 so this is called dx2 minus y2 or by 2 means it has also four loops out of which two are lying in the direction or along the x axis and two are lying in the direction of y axis that is in the, along these two axes now we have the last orbital that is having minus 2 value for ml. So this has the Cartesian coordinates that is 1 upon 4, 
into square root of it is same way that is x y that is 15 upon pi into 15 upon pi into <coughs> x y upon r square <coughs> upon r square here the shape of the orbital is like this x z and y axis so these are lying in this way in between x and y axis like this like this <coughs> then <coughs> these are two loops and remaining two loops are also like in the direction of that is x and in between x axis and y axis this is y axis and this is x axis like this So this is all the <coughs> dxy orbit. This is called dxy orbit. <coughs> so we have seen here to <coughs> this time that is the atomic orbitals shown by various quantum numbers. Now <coughs> we will see the next part of this. Uh, point that is quantum numbers and atomic numbers atomic wave function in the next lecture so when we will describe about the details of every quantum number further we, are, we will also describe about the magnetic quantum number principal quantum number azimuthal quantum number and <coughs> the spin quantum number in detail in the next lecture so till then goodbye see you next time so keep watching this video <coughs> subscribe to this video and press the bell icon button and like button thank you very much for watching this video